Okay, so it's 10.35, so we are on 9.35, sorry. I think we need to start now. So uh, welcome to this uh, What is uh, Time Diary Analysis of Work. My name is Pierre Walteri, and uh, I will take you through this hopefully interesting journey. So we have a lot to talk about. And uh, uh, I'm going to take you through uh, basically uh, uh, six uh, uh, things today. So I will say a few words about who we are as the uh, UK data service. Then I will uh, talk a little bit about what we mean by work in the context of uh, this type of time diary based analysis short history of time use so that we understand a little bit what this type of uh, approach uh, is about and then uh, so the main meal so to speak or the main course of this presentation i will talk about time dynamic instruments to measure work estimates that are derived from them and a couple of research-based examples so about the uk data service who are we so we are for those who don't know us uh, the main repository uh, for uh, uk secondary social science data we also provide support training and guidance to users and all of this is freely accessible funded by the economic and social research council our main users historically are academic researchers and students, but uh, increasingly also uh, now uh, government analysts, charities in the voluntary sector, business consultants, as well as independent research, research center and or think tanks. We curate uh, various types of data. Uh, our core business historically were large-scale cross-sectional UK, UK government surveys, such as, for example, the Labour Force Survey. Uh, but also, uh, we uh, curate uh, major UK longitudinal surveys, where individuals are followed over time, uh, large uh, multinational database, for example, from the OECD, as well as international survey data as well. We provide gateways and access to uh, census data, uh, both current and historic records, uh, business and some business and administrative data, as well as um, data, one-off surveys or qualitative multimedia data that uh, ESRC funded uh, researchers uh, uh, have a duty to uh, leave with us. Um, and last but not least, we also provide uh, support and training to users via our help desk. So any one of you using our data can ask us question on our help desk uh, via webinars and online workshop, uh, which are either data sets based, methods based or software focused. Uh, we have an increasing collection of online learning materials, um, such as our data skills modules and uh, the uh, forthcoming data skills pathways. And also, uh, we help users not only with traditional survey data, but also with uh, new forms of data, social media data, for example, via our computational social science team. Okay, so that was uh, about us, but now let's um, start with uh, the topic of today's proper. So what is work? It may seem like a pedantic question, uh, but I think it's important uh, that we actually uh, know uh, or make explicit what we are talking about. Work is a potentially huge topic. Work can be described as joy, effort, meaning. Uh, conflict, resources usage, or via the earnings and wealth production, it uh, gives rise. Uh, but obviously, as you can imagine, this is not we are what we are going to look at. We are not looking at work from the point of view of a total social fact, to use sociological jargon. But we are looking at work rather and maybe more humbly uh, through those aspects that can be measured and that can be measured in a specific way. That is, as the time we dedicate to it, 
together with some uh, contextual information. Now, moving to uh, the way work is formally defined, uh, I will present maybe two uh, common uh, definitions here. So the first one is uh, the one uh, that is uh, brought forward by the International Labour Organization. And why does it matter? Because it's uh, behind the conventions that are used for most social uh, and economic statistics used by uh, National Statistics Office. So work is defined uh, in terms of uh, whose it is for, so for own use or um, or used by others, uh, and also divided in terms of whether it uh, leads to producing services or goods, so which leads to the uh, these various categories you can see here on the plot, own use, production work, employment, for pay or profit, uh, unpaid trainee work, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, and volunteer work. Uh, another definition uh, that is also interesting, and you will see why uh, why later. Instead of uh, going through this complex uh, typology, we can simply define work as anything uh, that uh, you may was someone else, third party to you to do, sorry, on your behalf without losing the direct uh, utility that derives from it. So from that perspective, cooking a meal or looking after children is work, but watching a film is not because obviously the utility you derive from watching a film uh, cannot be transferred. And Importantly, this is work irrespective of whether someone, the third, the third party, is actually paid for it. Okay, so now how has work uh, or how uh, have time use uh, been uh, developing over time? So <clears throat> Why he, he, I'm mentioning this because basically time use research, uh, to some extent, uh, is indistinguishable from uh, a, a, a willingness to uh, understand better uh, household or workers' productivity. So the prehistory of time use research. Um, yeah, or if we look at the prehistory of time use research, we will see that uh, it starts in the early 20th century where um, various uh, authorities or uh, intellectuals were interested in understanding a little bit how uh, peasant household, in the case of Russia, uh, women in poor household, in the case of the Fabians in London, uh, were... Um, uh, either working or producing uh, producing goods. Uh, this there, there's a, there's been a more example with Soviet economists uh, looking at uh, time budget, how Russian workers were spending their time. Obviously, uh, Frederick Taylor's uh, scientific organization of work in the narrow sense of um, uh, line assembly workers. Uh, U.S. Departments for Agriculture uh, studies on the time use of farm uh, and town workers, uh, the U.K. mass observations. All of these uh, studies were trying to understand how, through how people spend their time, uh, but also how household uh, were uh, producing goods and services. Closer to our uh, interest here, are a batch of studies uh, that uh, were, uh, oh, sorry, that started uh, being promoted after the Second World War. So the founding father of modern time use studies is a Hungarian sociologist who's uh, called Sander or Alexander Salai, and who in the 1960s um, set out to uh, create a comparative study of urban uh, household and all the time use of urban household in 12 countries. So it was quite a feat, as you can imagine, in the middle of the Cold War, gathering a research team on both sides of the Iron Curtain and um, 
uh, yes, collecting survey data from this. So, and it's it is to be credited for the first uh, use of time diary as it's still currently being used. So, uh, time diary defined as um, uh, an instrument which gathers who does what, where, with whom. Uh, over 24-hour periods. A second uh, pioneer of uh, time use research is uh, Jonathan Gershuni at the Center for Time Use Research here in the UK, who set up the multinational time use study, and which st is still one of the main source of harmonized time use uh, data. After, uh, and slightly later, uh, international um, nomenclature of time diary data uh, were uh, created. So the ICATUS uh, at the United Nations or the Harmonized European Time Use Study uh, at the EU via Eurostat. So that's really a brief uh, history of the field of time use research. But now, how do time use research uh, or how do time use uh, time there is instrument um, uh, measure uh, things and measure work? So <clears throat> time diaries basically are survey data, overwhelmingly survey data. So these are surveys in which on the one hand, uh, as any other survey, you would have uh, individual questions such as uh, how old are you, what is your job, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But in addition to this normal person uh, level survey, uh, you have a time diary. So a time diary is a special type of questionnaire in which people are asked to tell or to write down at various interval, but the most common one is ten minutes time slots. Uh, what they were doing. Uh, I'll come back to this in a second. So it's usually collected on two days per person basis, one week day and what day at the weekend. And so for in, in the perspective of time diary, the unit of observation is not the person anymore, but the day. So we have a, a sample of days. So to give an example, the 2015 UK Time Use Survey collected uh, more than 16,000 such diary days uh, from 10,000 respondents in uh, 4,000 household and collected data, uh, time diaries for all uh, people aged eight and above in uh, these households. So now the instrument of time diary per se, uh, the most common time diary instruments record activities over 24 hours. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the, it's made of a core set of four variables. So the first one is what are people, what am I, if I'm the respondent doing, uh, or was I doing if I feel it uh, after the fact? Uh, mainly, uh, what was I also doing? Because most people uh, or often do some form of multitasking. Where was I when I was doing these things? And uh, who else, if any, uh, was also present when I was carrying these activities? So these are the four sets of uh, variables that are collected in time diary data. In addition, and more recently, uh, time diaries data have been re recording some measure of uh, immediate well-being, enjoyment, or uh, the extent to which uh, IT de devices were also re uh, used while uh, carrying out uh, activities. So that's what uh, a pen and paper traditional uh, diary could look like. So this is uh, the instructions that were uh, shared with users, participants of the UK uh, Time Diary uh, study of 2015. And so you can see uh, each line, uh, sorry, each row of the table represents a time slot, a 10 minutes time slot. And then people uh, fill in uh, the way, uh, the, their days the activity of their days in each one of the columns, main, secondary activity, uh, whether a device was used, where where they were, um, 
and uh, whether other people was present. Okay, let's go back to work, so to speak. <clears throat> in addition to this standard time diary in which all sorts of activity, but of course, including work, uh, are uh, recorded, there is a, a paid work specific uh, instrument that's called the work schedule and that has been collected in uh, a number, unfortunately not all uh, uh, main uh, time use surveys. So it's it's uh, interesting because it collects paid work uh, for a full week. So it's not uh, just uh, two days per week. Uh, it has a slightly coarser resolution of 15 minutes uh, instead of 10. But it's basically uh, a very convenient way of uh, mapping uh, someone's uh, paid working life uh, throughout uh, the week. So that's what it looks like. Uh, it looks like basically a series of lines uh, that uh, people rows on, on which people can draw a line that represents the amount of time that is spent uh, on paid work. So a full week uh, could work like this. And uh, uh, we have data uh, for uh, the UK in 2000 and 2015, for example. That's a really convenient uh, instrument, for, especially for researchers who are interested in looking at uh, uh, work rhythm, uh, atypical uh, work schedule, et, et cetera. Okay, so we're, we've talked about sample, we've talked about time diaries, but there's also the issue or we need also to be aware of uh, what people feel in their time diaries or how what people feel in their time diaries is actually uh, coded. Uh, and you, historically, this has been done via <clears throat> uh, standardized nomenclatures of uh, activity. Uh, there are several of them. So uh, the oldest one is probably the multinational time use study uh, one, so uh, created by uh, Gershuni, I mentioned earlier, but it gave rise or, uh, to uh, other um, nomenclatures such as the HITUS one for the EU or ICATUS for the UN. So these nomenclatures are basically uh, a standardized list of activities and um, uh, among which uh, paid work. Uh, for those of you who are interested in uh, different ways of conceptualizing paid work, and I'll provide an example in a moment, uh, it's interesting to look also at maybe large scale or, or uh, studies, time use studies, national studies, such as the Indian time use study, which has its own nomenclature, or the American time use study. So this is uh, a snapshot uh, and of course, you can imagine I can't provide a full description of uh, nomenclature uh, on slides, but this is just a couple of uh, snapshots uh, from these uh, nomenclatures. So this uh, particular one comes from the Indian Time Use Survey. And the Indian Time Use Survey is interesting. It, it has, the, the activities are classified according to which uh, part of uh, the economy uh, they contribute. So your paid work will be classified according to whether it's for agriculture and what kind of uh, contribution it makes to uh, agriculture. And you can see that given the, uh, the, the current importance of agriculture for uh, Indian uh, household, there's still a, a level of detail that you wouldn't find anywhere else. Uh, so at the other end, uh, that's uh, the recommendation and the detailed description of um, work according to the harmonized European time use study. So the guideline, your EU based guidelines, you can see it's work is um, defined uh, not as much uh, as uh, through its contribution to the economy, but as employment. So it's basically work as recorded in the urban time you study, is uh, the time you spend uh, on doing uh, the activities uh, as an employee, and as main and secondary job. 
the multinational time use study uh, also provides uh, its own uh, categorization of paid work related activities so it doesn't go as far in detail as uh, HITUS, but the logic remains the same so uh, are considered paid work uh, oh, are considered uh, work primarily uh, so paid work is main job at home second job or other home uh, or not at home um, travel is part of work breaks or other time at workplace. Um, and of course, this is, these are not uh, the only form of work that are recorded. I'm just focusing on this here for convenience. But of course, uh, other type of uh, unpaid work are recorded, uh, such as uh, housekeeping, you can see cleaning or caring uh, for other people. Uh, I can see that some uh, questions are being asked in the Q&A, but I will uh, answer these um, when uh, at, at uh, the end of the presentation. Okay, so maybe one last thing before we move on to uh, some estimates of time diary data. Uh, the data structure. So I'm not going to go too much into detail, but uh, typically what do time diary uh, files uh, or data set look like? There are, the answer is unfortunately, it's not one common um, or universal way of uh, coding uh, time uh, diaries, but a very common one is uh, files in long format. So each line of, such data set records uh, an episode, which is a unique combination of activity, location, um, and co-presence. And uh, so these uh, episodes are embedded within uh, persons, uh, within persons and days. Uh, it may sound a little bit abstract, so that's what it looks like uh, in practice. So you can see this is um, some uh, time diary uh, of uh, from a Spanish survey. So the first um, 19 uh, lines uh, in the table represent a day uh, as recorded by one person. And from line uh, number 20 onwards, we have the second, uh, so uh, uh, a second day from another person uh, within the same household. Um, and you can see we have, um, so typi uh, typical survey uh, identifications, a household number, person number. Uh, and but here the time uh, diary specific elements. So we have episode number. So ranging from one to nineteen, all of the different episodes recorded by the person, their duration, and what they were about. So we are on a Sunday, so there's not much uh, paid work here. There's some unpaid work. Um, but so th that's just to, to provide a, a, an idea of what it looks like. Okay, but now it's time to move on to uh, maybe uh, paid work uh, estimates with time diaries. So I am going to uh, take you through how typically a researcher or researcher would estimate uh, basic uh, quantities of uh, work. Uh, with time diary data. And maybe the most common of such quantities is duration. Since we have uh, all these episodes and the, their duration, uh, it's relatively straightforward to compute how much people, uh, how much time people spend uh, doing stuff. And uh, in our case, stuff is paid work uh, per day. So, in terms of how to do it, uh, you, uh, people usually do it by flagging uh, in, in the diary data set uh, relevant uh, episodes or work data set defined by the coding here. So, I'm using uh, data from the multinational time use study, so uh, coding from the multinational time use study. Uh, and I am not including commute uh, 
is uh, part of work. So once these have been uh, coded, and here I provide some example uh, with uh, the R software package, uh, the next uh, thing is to uh, make sure that uh, these work episodes actually record the duration of uh, the episodes. And if we were to uh, have uh, summary statistics for these uh, episodes, we would see it's extremely low, uh, six minutes per uh, on average is the mean. And why is it low? Simply because we are not uh, looking at what we should. We are looking at the mean overall mean uh, 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 duration of work episode instead of the total uh, amount of uh, work uh, or duration of work per day. In order to be able to account for the duration of work per day, we need to sum, uh, so if we will group sum of uh, episode, uh, work-related episode per day. And it's this sum, uh, whose mean that we can uh, then uh, look at uh, and uh, compare across country if that's the sort of analysis we are interested in. So we can see here uh, our first daily estimate of uh, time use, uh, work rated time uh, duration, still quite low. It's about uh, 126 minutes for Spain and 151 minutes for the US. It's really low. So uh, what's going on here? Why, why is it so low? Um, is it because we are looking at every day in in this in an indistinguished way? So what would happen if? And yes, sorry, I forgot. There's uh, uh, this data can be uh, easily uh, plotted, obviously, uh, but. Uh, maybe it's because we are not looking at, uh, or we are not differentiating uh, weekdays and uh, weekend. So if, if I introduce uh, an extra distinction between weekend and weekdays, uh, in the empty US, weekends and weekdays are uh, follow the US convention. So the week starts on Sunday. So that's the line of code I'm using here. You can see indeed that uh, people report clearly uh, more time on paid work uh, on weekdays, but it still remains low. It's still under two hundred minutes per day, so it's not uh, doesn't sound like the, the the typical time we would spend on um, uh, paid work in our uh, normal day. So this. Uh, leads us to consider maybe a choice uh, most time use uh, researchers have to uh, take on board, which is, are we uh, interested in uh, looking at an overall mean? So also looking at, uh, in our computation, at people who did not report work on um, uh, their diary day, or are we only looking at people who reported paid work? Uh, well, this is also known as uh, participants. So on the one hand, if we are interested in mapping the whole day of uh, survey respondent, we may want to indeed uh, take everyone on board and um, take participant and non-participant alike. But on the other hand, if we are only focusing on paid work, uh, for that matter, and we want to uh, reflect uh, or to have a sense of a typical <clears throat> amount of time spent on paid work, then we can uh, restrict the sample we compute our estimate from to those participants. And what happens if we do it? Then uh, we get this type of result. So I've retained here the distinction between weekdays and weekend. And we can see that now uh, the duration, uh, the daily duration on average for paid work are becoming more realistic. They, in most cases, they uh, uh, stand between 400 and 500 minutes per day, which is uh, about seven hours uh, is, uh, 
and correspond to uh, what we would expect. And from that uh, point on, what you can, of course, uh, conduct or, or look at national uh, differences. Okay, so that's a uh, uh, first instrument. A second instrument, um, which kind of uh, derives from the first one. So if we're able to compute duration uh, and uh, select people who were participants or not, then we can also uh, compute uh, the probability of uh, participation, the probability of reporting paid work uh, on a day, So, the, which is, in other words, the probability that our tag, uh, tagging variable will be greater than zero. And again, uh, in a way, that's more straightforward to compute than uh, duration. And we can see that on a typical day, people in the US, for example, were more likely to uh, report paid work uh, on weekday, at least, um, than, say, uh, people in Spain or uh, even the UK. And that remains true also for uh, weekends. A third type of uh, common instrument that is uh, used by time use researcher in exploratory fashion or maybe for a general discussion of how people spend their time is um, tempograms. Tempograms are basically plots or maps uh, in which the probability of or the probabilities of participations uh, in activities are represented at each time point uh, that uh, that is uh, recorded in a time diary. So, ten minutes time slot uh, is the the most common one. And what do they look like? They look like something like this. So. The x-axis here represents the time of the day. So by convention, <clears throat> time uh, use surveys start collecting uh, diaries at 4 in the morning and at uh, 3.59 the next day. And uh, this is for, uh, a weekday uh, in the UK. So what we can see here is the proportion of people uh, reporting paid work here in of full-time education, which is in a brownish green color. And it rises, start rising after 7 a.m., uh, peaks at around 11. There's a short slump here uh, for people who have a uh, traditional uh, lunch break and are not eating in front of their computer, and then goes back up in the afternoon and go back uh, down again afterwards after from uh, 4.30 uh, uh, p.m. Uh, and really they start declining uh, late, later in the evening. And con con concomitantly, sorry, uh, other type of activities, so reproductive work and shopping is being carried out by people who are uh, not doing, a proportion of people who are not doing paid work there. So that's a, an interesting map of um, uh, activities and including paid and unpaid work. And also uh, what is interesting is comparing such maps uh, between people or groups of people or even countries. So this uh, graph now is the same kind of data, but for a sample of French uh, people. And of course, you can immediately see that uh, in France, or oh, um, people uh, take a lunch break more seriously uh, here and uh, here. They, there's still uh, a bit of a sense of uh, a clearer uh, distinction between work and non-work, or clearer than it is uh, in the UK. Okay, so uh, so far I've presented uh, really uh, basic estimates of uh, work or paid work uh, using time use data. Uh, now I'm going to uh, look at uh, things that are probably uh, closer to uh, real work uh, research. Um, and 
yes, that reflects maybe uh, uh, the type of analysis uh, we would do as researcher, either by looking at uh, differences in time used by groups or gender day of the week, for example, or when we look at contextual aspect of work or when we build uh, really our own research in form of theory informed uh, indicators of uh, time use. So in first example is uh, something I uh, worked on personally a couple of uh, years ago. And it's about looking at unsocial working hours. So those of you in the field are familiar with the idea of or the, the question as to whether uh, having unsocial uh, or untypical work schedule uh, can affect your well-being or your mental health. And uh, the nice thing about time diary data is that it's relatively straightforward to build typologies of uh, typologies of uh, paid work based on the time of the day at which uh, work is reported. So, for example, using the work schedule I, I've talked about before. Uh, we can identify paid work that happens between, say, uh, uh, 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. Uh, and those that don't, those that happen at night in the evening or uh, at the weekend. And then uh, that helps us build an indicator of uh, how, uh, of uh, the amount of time uh, people spend working on such hours and the proportion of uh, such hours. So just in practice, uh, it's it amounts to flagging in a data set such uh, episodes that are could lab label as social and unsocial. Some the amount of time uh, they represent and compute means by group and gender uh, if that's what you are interested in. And you can also try, and th this is uh, what I did here, build uh, indicators where the proportion of uh, such hours relative to the total amount of paid work um, is, uh, is analyzed. So that's what it looks like. Um, so this is... Uh, uh simply differentiated by uh, gender the um, mean uh, proportion of unsocial hours uh, by sector of activity so we have sectors sorry i'm i'm saying uh, silly things it's not sector it's occupation <laughs> um so uh, ranging from elementary occupation to uh, all the way down or up to professional and managers. And what is interesting is that <clears throat> both uh, men and uh, women here uh, tend to have a larger proportion of their working time that is taking place on, on social hours if they are working in uh, lower skilled occupations. Um, so that uh, maybe contradicts a little bit the idea of uh, overworked managers who uh, are uh, available for work at any time of uh, of their week of their day. Anyway, uh, so that's uh, uh, an example of uh, yeah mapping unsocial hours uh, according to gender and uh, sector of uh, activity. Another uh, type of thing you can look at, and I uh, apologize for those uh, interested in unpaid work, given the limited amount of time for this presentation, most of uh, the examples I'm providing are about uh, paid work. Um, time diary data uh, also enables us to look at the context of work, so we can uh, look at uh, whether people working in isolation, people working with children in uh, in the room, or uh, location, work from home, uh, but also commuting. So uh, commuting and more generally traveling is uh, something that is coded uh, in time diary, usually is part of the location variable. And uh, we can uh, similarly compute a uh, type of uh, commuting uh, 
by uh, gender. And in this case, I chose to focus on um, regions of the UK. So these are not percentages. These are uh, mean daily uh, minutes spent commuting. Uh, and uh, Londoners won't be surprised to uh, discover that uh, they are those who <laughs> spend probably the longest amount of time uh, on their um, daily commute. Uh, what at the other end, people in Yorkshire or the West Midlands uh, having a shorter commute, Northern Ireland as well. <laughs> Uh, and in another interesting difference, and which may not surprise uh, you if you already familiar with the, the literature in that area, is that a man's commuting time uh, tends to be longer than women, and this has to do uh, with the division of um, paid and unpaid work. Okay, so that I I hope this provides a a, a little bit of a initial overview of what sort of uh, analysis can be carried out with uh, time diary data in the context of paid work. Um, I wanted to say a quick word about um, advanced visualization. We have more and more uh, fancy, nice uh, instruments now that can be used to um, visualize data. So um, what I've used is really basic uh, bar plots, area graph, etc. Uh, but there are people who are developing uh, more advanced tools. So just to give a snapshot, uh, I won't be able, unfortunately, to go into the detail here. Um, you can see on the top left here, it's a, a tempogram uh, that I've uh, similar to what I've shown, but you can also map transitions. So what do people do, for example, right after, right before engaging in paid work? And that allows you to map transitions and such a, a flower <laughs> type of a plot uh, can uh, can show you how to do that. Uh, there's a live animation uh, here showing uh, a little bit like a film of how these uh, uh, transitions occur. So this is an, an animated graph, even if I can't show you. Uh, or maps, uh, geographical maps, etc. So I uh, will share the slides uh, later, and uh, uh, those interested in accessing these resources will be able to find them. And finally, uh, if you're interested in uh, gaining more information about time diary data, time diary research, uh, I would definitely uh, advise you to look at the Center for Time Use Research at UCL. Uh, and for data, uh, either, uh, yes, the, the MTUS uh, data set uh, or series of data sets uh, curated by CTUR, or uh, of course the UK data service for the UK based uh, time diary data. And uh, I provide also a link to uh, ICATUS uh, and uh, HITUS uh, if you want to look at this international um, nomenclature. So uh, I think we are running out of time. Thank you very much for your uh, interest in the topic. 